And I'm guessing from a Polish perspective, uh, the initial news of a rocket landing in their territory in Tuchel, that must have been a horrendous moment. Absolutely. I mean, it's the first time, uh, you know, in my lifetime, and I guess in yours yeah. too, that we've had anything like this, a, a missile landing on a, on a Western country you know, and a NATO member. You know, yeah. Poland joined NATO, obviously, long after we did, but nonetheless, it's been there for a while now. So this is a, a shocking development. And it just brings out, actually, as you were saying, I think, just how dangerous the situation is. Mm. Yes. Oh, it's dangerous, all right. But it, you know, Zelensky... You know, he's done sort of Zoom conferences with parliaments all over the West and huge standing ovations, and we're treating him as this man of great wisdom. His comments last night were not wise, were they? I'd say probably not, but I think, he, as you said, I mean, he's, he's under stress, and I think it's, you know, there's, there's a bit of propaganda to it. But, of course, we actually don't know what he was told. I mean, he may have been told that it actually was a Russian rocket, you know. And well, the U.S., the initial U.S. Yeah. reports did suggest that, so yeah. Yeah, I'm not suggesting, by no, the way... And it's very difficult to, you know, obviously, I mean, we've got the best technology in human history trying to track these rockets, but that's it's one thing having them. It's another thing, that information getting to leaders within, you know, minutes or seconds, because everyone wants to be on the news, you know. It's tough. It's tough. I get that. I just think, you know, hey, I'm not in his position. But when I saw that news report, I acted with caution. I didn't jump the gun yeah, sure. in any way at all. I rather think that he did. And I think we should just treat what he says with a little bit of caution. But on the bigger picture, Charles, one of the things that I've been surprised by is the lack of the lack of initiative from the West to spark peace negotiations. Why is that? <laughs> Well, that's a big question. I would say the, I mean, my own view is that the war is a negotiation. This is a well, war. The war itself is a negotiation. Absolutely, yeah, sure. The war, because the, the negotiation is about, is, it's about land, but it's also about your willingness to defend yourself. And it's about your willingness to, you know, be free of, of what basically is Russian imperialism. You know, Russia's got some great points about its history in Ukraine. But, but I think, for me, the real deep dishonesty of Putin's position is he doesn't really acknowledge the, the horrific things which were done in the Stalin period and many times actually in the past before that to destroy the Ukrainian identity. And his speeches sort of play it all down as if they're sort of, you know, I don't know quite what the equivalent would be in the in the UK, but sort of... Um, I don't think there is one. No, but, but imagine that London was trying to sort of squash the Yorkshire language and saying anyone who speaks Yorkshire is a sort of some sort of primitive, backwards, lost well, well, southern. Well, well, maybe the BBC did that with received pronunciation as possible. Well, but, 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 you know, it's, but it's an interesting question. I mean, language and identity you yeah. know, are, are very deep things. And there were people, you know, teachers and academics being murdered in the Stalin purges simply for trying to teach Ukrainian. So there's a long history of this. And once... And I think now, because the Ukrainians had some sort of taste of a rather, you know, corrupt democracy, but they've seen what Poland has done. I mean, I was, Poland is one of the great success yep. stories yep. of modern history. Yep. It's had continuous growth pretty much ever since the end of communism, despite the so-called shock therapy, which everyone now condemns, but it's really worked. And it's gone to be one of the, something like the 20th richest country in the world. And the Ukrainians are looking across the border and saying, well, why can't we have some of that? You know, and that's sort of what it's about. But Ukraine is a very corrupt country, isn't it? Well, it is, of course it's corrupt, but then the whole of the former Soviet Union is horrifically corrupt. But part of the reason it's corrupt is that Russia doesn't want it to become a normal country. This is the point. I mean, so things get manipulated mm. there. And this is a, you know, a, a Ukraine and Poland have been battling over that massive field there and with Russia, you know, for 400 years. And this is the latest phase of it. But it does come down to whether or not a Ukrainian identity exists and is something worth, you know, having in Europe.